Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Chogo. I'm part of the uh, Momentum NHS group we set up when uh, Corbyn was elected in 2015. Uh, a group of campaigners who had previously campaigned within the Labour Party to uh, push it towards uh, a full defence of the NHS after the Health and Social Care Act. Uh, and we thought this was a good opportunity to, for that to bear fruit because we, ha we have somebody on our side uh, running the Labour Party now in this respect. Um, I just wanted to do as, probably as brief as possible an overview of um, the, the history of, of how we, the NHS has got to where it is um, and the Labour Party's role in that and how we need to change that. Um, the, this is going to be very sketchy and most, most of you, many of you perhaps know this. Um, but you know, essentially Margaret Thatcher planned to replace the NHS with an insurance system. Uh, she shocked even her cabinet when she told them that uh, and they just started work on this. Um, the, the, the market was introduced as an internal market. Blair came in, I'm skipping quite quickly, Blair came in um, uh, on a promise to get rid of the internal market and on a wave of uh, uh, the anger and upset that people had with 18 years of the Tory government, but he felt that uh, what the Tories had been doing on education and health were, was uh, interesting and to be built on, and um, that's what he did. And uh, his key advisor, Simon Stevens, helped bring clinical, um, the private sector into clinical services and a whole raft of other measures that are not as well known as PFI but are uh, at least as pernicious and, uh, and, and their vision for the NHS is summed up by, in the book, uh, the plot against the NHS where, the, where the, the Tony Blair's health team was those responsible interviewed, um, is, was a network on a, uh, sorry, a logo on a network of private providers, that's what they wanted to make the NHS into it. So, in, in other words, it wouldn't be the NHS, it would just look like it from the outside, but it would be a profit mechanism. So, uh, this is this was never changed. There was never an official break with that. Um, the, uh, the Miliband manifesto promised a lot of things which appeared in this last manifesto, are unwelcome uh, <laughs> familiar faces, uh, such as the NHS as a preferred provider in a market of providers. Um, such as a limit on, uh, Janice has mentioned this stuff, so, um, sorry? Oh yes, thank you, I will change the slide, whoops. Sorry about that. Um, so, th uh, this stuff has reappeared recently, and that, that reminds us that the fight within the Labour Party, for a Labour Party that defended it, just never ended when we elected Corbyn, even though Corbyn is part of a section of the party that has always stood against PFI and all the privatisation of all those years. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a given, and, and a lot of people seem to think that um, if an MP is friendly and doesn't call Corbyn names in the, in the Tory press, then they're on our side, and uh, there's more to politics than that, than the theatre of it. So uh, there's the policy, and there's the manifesto called for rever to reverse privatisation of the NHS, not the privatisation, but privatisation. So that call came from, let's say, our side of the party, um, but the, a lot of the content didn't. And um, uh, we have uh, Alex Scott Samuel here from the, uh, the chair of the Socialist Health Association who will uh, quickly sum up uh, the motion composite that was agreed last night to be voted on soon at the conference, uh, yeah. which they had to fight for. Uh, yeah, for, for those who don't know, um, last night um, there was a, a composite meeting where um, CLPs um, brought motions to Labour Conference about the NHS. Um, nearly all of them you know, called for the Labour Party to have a much clearer commitment to renationalising the NHS. So these are these two questions that we need to consider. Has Labour made a decisive break with its privatising past? As, as Nicholas explained, the Labour Party under Blair and Alan Milburn did um, play a part, quite a substantial part, in bringing um, uh, the private sector into the NHS. So when we consider what Labour can do to fight for the NHS, we need to consider whether there's been a break with that past. And also the question, does Labour back the NHS reinstatement bill? Now, there were 40 motions to conference uh, about the NHS that were discussed last night, and they've been brought together into one composite. And uh, Alex Scott Samuel is here. He's chair of the Socialist uh, Health Association. He's moving that composite. Um, Alex, do you want to tell us uh, about um, that process? Yeah, should I just speak from here? Is that yeah, okay? if you want, yeah. Shall yeah. I bring you a mic? Oh, if you like. Uh... <laughs> 
Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, Alex Scott Samuel, uh, chair of SHA and um, also part of the Momentum sorry, Corp. Sorry, standing up? I can't see. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, uh, chair of SHA and also part of the Momentum Corp group. And in fact, it was it was three of us here in this room, uh, Joe, Nicholas and myself, who wrote most of the motion that will be debated tomorrow, although it is being debated as the Socialist Health Association motion because we uh, successfully persuaded uh, the SHA to adopt and submit it and about 15 constituencies submitted the same motion and a number of other constituencies submitted uh, overlapping motions. Sorry Alex, about 27 can submitted a version of Oh that. sorry, yeah. sorry, Nick's better, uh, Nicholas is better on the yeah. figures than I am. Um, uh, so the, comp the compositing meeting was an interesting experience. It was the first time I'd been to one, and um, even though my impression from an earlier discussion with, with Jonathan Ashworth, who <coughs> drafted the motion that was put forward by, quote, the Labour Party, um, and was discussed last night, because there was a draft of a composite, there were problems with it, and ma I managed to get him to remove some of but, but, them, but not all of them. But in fact, it wasn't Ashworth. It was Lord Philip Hunt, you know, the health person in the Lords, and uh, identified with some of the uh, Blairite kind of policies that Nicholas was talking about, etc., who actually was uh, on the front bench at the meeting. Um, but fortunately, everybody else at the meeting, i.e. Uh, from the constituencies, was on precisely our wavelength. And even though Hunt did his damnedest to s sustain the sort of Blairite kind of reservations that Nicholas was referring to, i.e. To, to keep out things like a specific mention of the NHS reinstatement bill, just to give one example. Oh, and the other one, to keep out a mention of the five-year forward view. Um, he, he did such a terrible job, and don't please put that in the whatever. Um, okay, anyway, I've said it now, but... Um, um, uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, so I look forward to reading the daily whatever. Um, uh, and um, uh, that, that in fact, uh, the room, as well as sharing all our values, you know, got so annoyed and angry that, that it made it even easier to push through the things that needed to be said, i.e. everything that is in the yeah, SHA. Yeah. Um, 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 yeah, so we got everything we wanted. We've got, um, we've got the specific mention of the NHS reinstatement bill, we've got specific mention of the five-year forward view and all its evils, etc. And just e everything that is in the SHA motion is in the composite. It's the most progressive health motion, probably, that Labour have had since 1948. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair to her, Diane Abbott did a wonderful job in putting forward that same vision last year, in the brief three months when she was Shadow Secretary of State for Health. And uh, I, for one, was extremely sad that uh, she moved across to the, to the Home Office uh, responsibility. So, anyway, um, uh, what have I left out, Nicholas and Joe? Well, that's good, oh, okay, so it'll be tomorrow afternoon, I think, during the health and care debate, the, um, the, the, the debate on, on the motion. It'll be seconded by Sue Richards, who uh, is on the Keep Our NHS Public Executive and is from Islington North uh, CLP, I think. And um, obviously, uh, you know, we can't assume that everyone in the room at conference will be on our side, and some unions will understandably have concerns about their workers who could be affected by scrapping the STPs, etc. So I don't know precisely uh, what to predict will happen tomorrow mm. often, but obviously we will do our damnedest to ensure that this, is adopt this motion is adopted by conference, and if it is, we must then do our damnedest to make sure that the shadow front bench implements in as much as they can, I don't mean, you know, puts into practice, scraps the SDPs because they can't do that, obviously, but does everything in that motion 
advocates for everything in that motion so that Labour is seen as the party of the totally fully reinstated and renationalised NHS. Thank you. Thank you very much for having that report. Um, just, I'm just going to quickly answer the, the questions we have here. Has Labour made a decisive break? It's in progress. It's not being done loudly and it's not being done very visibly, unfortunately. So if, if it were, we would have more ways to take part. So I think it's up to us to, 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 to get involved in that and tell other people, get other people involved. Does Labour back the NHS reinstatement bill? Well, uh, Diane Abbott committed to it last year, but it disappeared since then, and this motion asks that it be in the next manifesto. So that's also a work in progress that we all need to be part of. So if you're not a delegate, if, you vote, if you're a delegate, please vote for it. If you're not, ask, and you know others who are, ask them to vote for it, and I would teach Yeah, ultimately, um, I mean, Labour is the proverbial, you know, broad church, as they say. Um, Corbyn has said quite clearly in the past that he backs the NHS reinstatement bill, but really... You, we can only do, do that as a party if we support Corbyn and we use our, you know, our, our grassroots pressure of, 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 of you know, bottom-up activism to make sure that that Corbyn is just one man, but you know, a movement put him in place. We have to be, you know, the thing that powers that movement and that makes sure that you know that the Labour Party commits quite clearly. Um, you know, to this policy, and do, yes, please do go and, and vote for this motion if you are a delegate. Can I just, sorry, sorry yeah. to interrupt, it's just I feel like, I feel like what Alex has just reported has really changed what the tenor of what we can do here in this next half hour, because yeah. I feel it's really urgent that perhaps Alex can advise us on, some of us, some of us, some of us know delegates and we can be in contact with them, so that they can move this information around conference and press. Sure. But uh, the question is, what other pressure can we bring to bear in the next 24 hours on that motion to the waverers? You know, which MPs can we be writing to? Which unions can we be writing yeah. to? So we can get out there quickly and get the email stream on and even have yeah. another demonstration in front of conference. Yeah, so absolutely. I feel like it's urgent we, we discuss that stuff yeah. immediately. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well we have, we have a speaker, uh, Dr Mike Galvin, who's talking about um, how he's been lobbying MPs. So he will deal... Uh, Mike, would, would you like to say something about... Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, we, also well, we do have someone who's talking about lobbying MPs, and I think yeah, we do need to make that you know extremely contemporary. And when we go into our groups and consider what we need to do, uh, we need to think yeah, think through you know what can we do in the next twenty four hours actually you know twenty four hours to save the NHS. In the next hour. Yeah, we've only got an hour. <laughs> yeah. Can I pick up on that last um, speaker there? Uh, the momentum's got an app that a lot of people are using with um, a, a, a way of um, instant notification. Right. Maybe worth talking to whoever is in charge of that and asking them. Okay. If you want well, to when, when we go into groups, um, you could put that, if you put that on the paper, and then you know we'll look at all the suggestions from people and we will try and mobilise people into action to work for this motion. So if you put that on there... Madeline, you're, you're, you're up next. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very, very brief. I just want to say, please, please, can we look at how we're putting pressure on the Labour Party now? Yeah. We can't wait for them to be elected. Absolutely. They have to be doing things yes. now or the NHS will be gone. That's what, yes, that's, that's what we're going to talk about. We really need to be doing something now. Sure. Do you want to come up to the front? Are you wanting to speak? No, not, not particularly. <laughs> <laughs> but I yeah, you, we, you can come and do your, your, your talk. Oh, yeah. right, I thought I was leading a workshop. Well, well that, I don't mind. Don't worry. If you, if you just come up and say, say something for a few minutes. Sorry, yeah. there's another question there, another hand up there. Faye. Yeah. Hi, I'm Faye, I'm from Putney CLP, I'm a delegate. So we have an opportunity. There will be a debate on the motion now, am I right? Yes. Yeah. yes. So they will call for people from the floor That's to it. come and speak. Yes. So that is our opportunity to educate conference, to educate Labour members, for all the conference delegates to go back and take this information back to their to back to their constituency parties. That that's our opportunity, and we have to take that. We'll only have a few minutes each. We've got to organise ourselves so that there are lots of us ready to go up. Each of us prepare a speech so that we dominate that that debate, yes. and we have to say that there are two key things 
in this enormous motion, there are two key things. The NHS reinstatement bill and opposition to the five-year forward view. Those are key things, and that's what the delegates should be looking at, and that's what we've got to make sure that the and demand. And if I get selected, so I'll be waving my hands right now. I haven't got a banana or a parrot, but I'll, maybe I'll try and get one. If I get selected, I'm going to tell the delegates that they must vote for the motion and they must demand now and ask Jonathan Ashworth, does he support the NHS reinstatement bill? Will it be in the... And we can demand that from the floor. We can ask him. I don't know whether he will be there on the platform, but we can ask him directly then, at that moment, put pressure on him. Does he support it? We've all, we've all got to consider yeah, what we do in the next 24 hours. If you uh, make sure you all put your contact details on the contact sheet, then when we've gathered everybody's feedback about what we need to do, we will be your rapid response team and we will immediately go away and we will do what we need to try and get this motion passed. So this is very, very focused, this uh, session on what we can do. I'd like to introduce Madeline Dickens of uh, Defend Our NHS Sussex. And if you'd just like to say something about what you think we can do right now, because obviously the time is now. Yeah. Okay, I mean, obviously it's crucial the composite gets passed, because that, that will then be enshrined in Labour policy. And we can wave it, for example, at our minority Labour council, who are resisting every attempt we're making to, to get them to stop STP. There's this whole disjunction, the thing that concerns us most, there's this massive disjunction between what the leadership are doing and what local yeah, councillors yeah, are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a wave of, of, of refusals in Labour, Labour and Tory local authorities to collaborate with STP about six months ago. Yeah. That wave has almost dissipated. Yeah. So we're, we're facing Labour, Labour authorities all around the, council, around the country busily collaborating with STP. Yeah. Now, as long as that's happening, we can pass as many composites as we like. Nothing is going to happen. The, the, the NHS is going to go, it's going to be destroyed. And it's that disjunction which we need to be doing, which is one of the things we need to be doing something about. Um, and the SHA certainly, I know, have been sort of supporting this view. You know, we really need to be, there are lots of things we can, be, apart from the next 24 hours, there are lots of things we need to be doing. We need to be pressurising John Ashworth in particular. Yes, at, at our demonstration yesterday, John Ashworth made a commitment to scrap STPs. Now, that's the first time any of us had heard it. And we need to be pushing him on that. We need to be pushing all Labour MPs on that. Don't forget, the introduction, all these things that have been happening to the NHS is one of the most anti-democratic moves in, in this country's history. This government is trampling all over our democracy. And we need to, that issue needs to be raised by the Labour Party. They need to be speaking, for, shouting from the rooftops about it. As an SNP MP recently referred to the Tim Pop dictators in the Tory party. And that is who we've got. They don't give a shit about our democracy or democratic process. The vast majority of... Sorry, I'm, I haven't really prepared anything, so it's all blah, blah, blah. Sorry about that. The, the vast majority of MPs don't know what's happening with STP. They don't have a clue. They don't have a clue our education system has all but, all but been destroyed. They don't have a clue, and we need to make sure they have a clue. They, we need to make sure that the whole of the Labour Party is energised and activated to do something about what this government... This government is eradicating our welfare state. Madeleine, would you just say a couple of things about how your organisation, your NHS campaign, has been working with uh, local momentum and local Labour? And, and then Mike is going to talk a bit about uh, just what you mentioned, about telling and educating some of our MPs. We're very fortunate in Brighton and Hove. I mean, I don't know if there are any Brighton and Hove Momentum members here. There probably are. But, but we have... Uh, the membership at the last count was something like 7,000 and growing. We have a phenomenal... We have, now have three constituencies. And Momentum people hold most of the posts in those constituencies, barring a few sort of pockets of resistance. So we were very, very fortunate in the city. Having said that, we have a minority Labour council who are hell-bent... On, on participating in STP, helping the CCG in any way possible to get rid of um, to get rid of to, to get rid of our health service, and that is obviously our major concern. Now we recently we got fed up of sending emails to councillors, lobbying, going to surgeries. We got fed up of that, and we recently produced a motion which which went to which was, which was designed. I've got some copies with me. I, sorry, I didn't realise there'd be so many people here. I should have done, I suppose. Um, 
We recently did a motion which was to go to tr all trade union branches in the city, all political parties in the city. Now, it, it went to, I, I did the first session at a, a Labour Party ward, and the, head of, the chair of Health and Wellbeing Board turned up and a couple of cohorts, there was an ex-Labour MP, all arguing against our motion. They weren't in that ward. Now, that's just a sample of the anti-democratic measures they're, they're engaging in. We recently had the leader of the council, a, 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 a motion was, the motion was passed in his ward, which he didn't attend. It was passed unanimously, and the leader of the council then put out an email saying, oh dear, I don't agree with this motion, I think we should revise it. That is symptomatic of what we're facing. And I think those are the sorts of issues that we have to recognise are going to be we're all, are going to be thrown at all of us. Now, having said that, we're now we got we can now we've clearly rattled the council's cage big big time. And I would recommend that maybe people think about doing that in their own sort of Labour authorities or even Tory authorities if they're remotely sympathetic. But we have to start getting at them directly and threatening their power base. And I think that's what this motion's done. They wouldn't be throwing at it what they have. If it, didn't threat, if it wasn't threatening in some way. And that, I think, is, is one of the things that we, we've been doing that over the last few weeks, and that's certainly something we're going to build on. So that motion is effectively now going up to constituency level in the three constituencies. And we're hoping that it might go further. Um, obviously, it's all in the lap of the gods at the moment, and it will all depend how, how much more the council try to do to stop it. But that, I think, we've got to start that pressure yeah. So you mentioned the pressure from, the, from the, the grassroots. We've got to start building that pressure, and hopefully the Labour Party will t start taking that seriously. But the Labour Party leadership also have to start putting pressures on local authorities. But the local authorities, to be honest, are an embarrassment to the Labour Party, and they're going to affect the ultimate vote of the Labour Party. Yeah. Yeah. They could stop the Labour Party getting into government. Yeah. But to be honest, so many people in this city are disillusioned with what, with what is happening locally. It is turning people off. And although there's a massive commitment to Corbyn in this city, I mean, we really, it needs to be tackled from all sides, basically. Thank you. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Mike Galvin now of Leeds Keep Our NHS Public. He's going to talk about um, his work lobbying MPs. Um, and if you could say something in particular about what you think we need to do in the next 24 hours to get Labour MPs to back this motion. No pressure. <laughs> so, well, thanks. Yeah, the frustration that we've heard from, the frustration that we've heard expressed by Madeline just now, in Keep Our NHS Public in Leeds, we've been increasingly frustrated at the lack of support from Labour MPs for the National Health Service um, reinstatement bill. And we are aware that without legislation in the form of that bill, the NHS is finished. So we decided that we would lobby our 36 Labour MPs in Yorkshire and Humberside. Of those 36 MPs, only four are signed up in support of the NHS reinstatement bill. So we decided to lobby them on a on a face-to-face -face basis. And in order to do that, we assembled a group of documents, pertinent documents, and we've got a number of them there that you, that you can take, and plus a PowerPoint presentation to emphasize the importance of the NHS reinstatement bill. And if there's time, we can say <coughs> it later on. Now, um, I'm lucky because my MP is John Trickett, who is the shadow minister for the cabinet office, and he's one of those four who are signed up to the NHS bill. So we took these documents and the PowerPoint to him for his advice on whether he thought it was good or and what, how, how to go about it. Now, he was very supportive, and he gave us some very valuable advice. He emphasized the importance that in the approach to each MP, there needs to be constituents of that MP in, the, in each case, plus somebody that really knows what they're talking about. He emphasized the, the, the he was very pleased that this was a, a bottom-up approach. In other words, a democratic approach to, from, from, from the grassroots coming up to make demands on, on the MPs. 
He gave his personal endorsement to the, our aims for a, to keep the NHS as a public service. And he emphasized the importance that the, that the NHS bill it must apply to all aspects of the NHS, to the ambulance service, to the, to the, the, the doctors and the nurses and the physiotherapists and everybody. Um, so, so that's it really, we, we've approached him, we've sent out about over 20 of these to, to our local MPs. We're hoping to follow that up now with, with an approach on a one-to-one -one basis with each of those MPs. And, and, and that's it really. I, I just thought I mentioned. I know that you've also uh, started a conversation with his team, where you where he's he's learning more on more consistently what's happening with the NHS from key researchers and campaigners. So I think that's very important to well, to, to, yes, to get well, MPs yes, who are on our side to know what's yes, happening. Yeah, yeah. I think I know what you're referring to, Nicholas. There, one of his staff contacted me a couple of days ago, and um, we're lucky to have some very very active. There's one particular lady who was a, a freelance journalist, and, and, and so I was able to put his office in touch with her. And he, she's been able to provide valuable in information to Sir John Trickett's office. So, so yeah, that's all. I think that's what you're referring to, Nicholas. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, Thank you very much. So, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so the, these are the packs that you're sending to MPs, yes, Mike. So if yes. anybody would like one of these, yes. um, please do come and uh, help yourself. Um, uh, we're going to have uh, one more speaker, and then what we're going to do is going to dis we, we're going to take some action, basically. Uh, but uh, so please don't get too frustrated that we're talking, talking, talking at you. Because uh, we're definitely going to do something. And if you have, has everybody put their um, uh, contact details on on a sheet that's going round. We will what once we once we've taken these suggestions about what we do, you know, in the immediate term to, um, you know, to secure the future of this motion at conference, um, and, and and other things. We, we we'll let you know if there's any action that you can take between now and that vote to make sure that goes through. I'd like to introduce uh, David Matthew Bailey if you'd like to come up from. Are oh, you understand it? Okay. Hi. Um, my name's David. Uh, my background is I'm an A and E nurse working in Oxford. I've witnessed obviously the kind of destruction that's happening to the NHS. Uh, currently in A and E, we've gone back to finding uh, patients lying on trolleys in corridors, um, and the average wait for a bed from A and E at the moment in my department is about 12 hours. Um, and I do not know how we're going to get through winter. I mean, all summer. You know, we, we haven't seen no winter peak. We didn't really have a winter last year, and yet the summer has been worse than our last winter. In fact, our peak was in May. Um, just to, so I'm just talking about how I became an activist, really. And it, uh, and it really goes back to, uh, I've been a kind of pacifist for many years. I've been on demonstrations since the 1980s. I was sort of uh, politicized by Thatcher. Um, but I never really went fur much further than that until Jeremy Corbyn uh, stood as uh, leader for the Labour Party and I rejoined the Labour Party which I'd left in the Blair years. Um, and at conference last year, I um, network, I mean this, was a fan this is a fantastic opportunity to network and make new friends and uh, find fellow socialists. Um, and <coughs> basically we came back buzzing from conference last year and Jeremy Corbyn had asked us for a National Day of Action uh, on the NHS, uh, which was going to, I think it was held on uh, November the 26th last year. We didn't have very long to organise and we uh, waited for local Labour Party and Momentum to start uh, organising something because we thought that's what would happen. And we very quickly discovered that nothing was being organised and nothing was going to happen. So the only way anything was going to happen in Oxford to talk about what our local problems were was to organise ourselves. So these two gentlemen over there, Norman and Gwyn, and another uh, a, de a lady who's a delegate in conference at the moment, Kathy, we um, decided to start our own uh, protest organisation, which we called Hands Off Our NHS. We have a Facebook page if you're interested. Um, and basically, we very quickly um, organised ourselves. We've all got different talents, and we use those. Uh, we got hold of the press, 
um, and we organised to demonstrate on that day. Um, we realised Jeremy Corbyn was coming to Ruskin College as well, and that was being kept very quiet. And we figured he might come down as, it, as he'd organised this day of action into Oxford if we organised something. With a lot of pushing, Labour, the local Labour Party said they were going to do street stalls. Um, I think only one was actually ever uh, put up, and that was way on the edge of Oxford uh, by some of the local momentum activists. Um, anyway, so we went ahead and organised this. We got a, a coffin, and uh, which we got donated free by a local... Um, Undertakers. Thank you, undertakers. Um, and, and we put on a demonstration and we, we advertised it on Facebook and Twitter and places. We got Twitter accounts and whatnot. And we ended up with about 200 people, um, which we paraded uh, down the Cowley Road. I don't know if it's a, very, a great place. It's the centre of Oxford to Carfax uh, with lots of noise. Um, and we got a lot of attention. We were on South today. We ended up with a big, a big article in the Oxford Mail, and we, we ended up, you know, from being a fairly new and small outfit, punching way above our weight, but it, sorry, I'll wrap up. Um, anyway, so coming to this thing, uh, what we should do for tomorrow. Personally, I think we should do something big, and I think we should, you know, I used to watch the conference um, debates in the, in the sort of eight, 70s and 80s uh, on the afternoons on BBC Two or whatever, and there would be lots of argument, there would be people coming up to the front, and I think we should do something. Why don't we take ba our banners, local banners that we took to the NHS march uh, yesterday, and actually take them to conference, and actually kind of take the floor, and actually get people who are already uh, delegates to speak, you know, and uh, I think we should do something active and not passive, and I don't think we should be wait waiting to be asked to speak, I think we should make sure we are speaking. We should have our banners at the front. We should make sure we're on ITV and BBC. Let's get the media to talk about this. Even if we end up being chucked out, let's take that floor. Very good. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Just I'll mention, there's a couple of thousand leaflets which are to give out to delegates to tell them essentially about the manifesto policy, about the problems with it, and to ask them to vote for the motion. So. Um, we, that's, that can be part of it. We can give them out. I've got some of them here. And yes, let's let's organise to to do that. Why not? And and uh, we can do that at the end. We might have to cry outside on the pavement, but we'll do that. Um, the, the the idea of this is for. Um, I think yeah, we wouldn't admit it's very very topical and current. I think yeah. What we'd like to do, and it's not it's not it's not an ideal room by any means. Um, but what we'd like you to do is to divide up into groups of four or six or eight. We've got some charts. We've got all your contact details. What we'd like to know is what what should we do? It, it's very, it, there's a sense of urgency. What should we do to try and ensure that this motion gets passed? Uh, and what can we do after conference um, to fight for the NHS and the Labour Party? And how do we uh, bring people together and, and build that network that fights for the NHS and the Labour Party? So we'd like your suggestions um, and uh, there's this flip chart chart sheets on the right um, but you can also you could also turn around and face each other in the group it's not an ideal room is it yeah I mean well, you have to, it's not but the, it, you should have each group can get a flip chart sheet and some some pens to write this down please write your names next to each one so we can connect it to your details that you've given us um, it's, th there's the motion at the moment, but there's going to be something else tomorrow, there's going to be something else the day after that, and it's, and it's ongoing. And what we've heard tonight, today, is that there are people fighting for the NHS within the Labour Party, doing more than what the Labour Party's uh, bureaucracy is offering. And uh, uh, that's, you know, we, we want anybody who's thinking of starting out to find encouragement, to contact the people who have who've spoken, for example, and, and we, you can help each other out to, to, with advice and so on, and, uh, and also to help connect to all the things that we're doing on a longer term. As a group, we set up with... Sorry, can we, we, want, we just want to move on and we want to know yes. if there's any other delegates in the room. Because yeah. yeah. we want to know what they're going to say and how they're going to speak to it. And we want yes. to give them ideas about how to bring the power and the anger of people about the NHS and having United Health and taking over. That sounds great. We want to make the arguments, like in that great documentary, Sicko, which is, this is yes. what happens when you have a US system. This is what happens.
happens when you have privatisation. And this is what you get to preserve if you keep the NHS. We want those arguments out there and we want the anger on the conference floor. Well, this right. is what it's about. We have to move more quickly. This is the power that's offered to us now, which we've never had in 30 years. So let's not faff around. Let's hear what the delegates can say for us tomorrow. Are there any other delegates who are going to be able to speak from the floor tomorrow? Put your hand up if you're yes, a delegate who will be able to speak from the floor. Okay, so How many have we got? Yeah, okay, in, so given the urgency of the situation, what, what, would, each of, would each of the delegates like to, you know, come forward and... Um, Ashlyn, we'll do you want to... We'll help you, we'll workshop it with you. We'll help okay, you. all right. What we need as well is people's suggestions for what we do in the next 24 hours and we need you to write them on the pieces of paper and we will be like a rapid response team to get those suggestions disseminated amongst everybody and as widely as we can. But we need to know what actions to take. So if you... Can I suggest that one delegate also goes with each group so that you can also discuss that, but not only yeah. that, because it's How not How many delegates this. have we got again? One, two, three. We don't really have enough for each group. Another very key suggestion. Very key suggestion. Everybody, you all know, you all know your constituency. You all know who your constituency secretary is. Therefore, they know they can email today. Yeah. A, an email to all the de yeah to the delegates. There, we've got Brighton and William. We've got 22. I'm going to go. I'm going to make sure that they all have a short statement. This is what you get up and say on conference call. They're all left in Brighton and William in, in the Labour Party. So that's what we'll do now, so that all our 22 will be voting for it tomorrow and speaking as soon as they can, informed by a short message. From, so you can all do that. Get to your your constituency secretary this afternoon. Use social media. Yeah, we will. We'll use social media. Fair, fair is first. I think it's really important to tell any delegates that you know to reject any amendment. So I saw what um, Lord Hunt did last night. And he was very, I mean, one clever thing that he tried to do was to get us to change the text, which actually is not possible. And you're not supposed to do this in conversating, but anyway, to change the text to from the NHS bill 2016-17 to a labor, reinst labor reinstatement bill. So he pushed again and again for hours. I mean, we were there till 11. He pushed again and again for that. And that's what they will try and do. Ashworth and Hunt now there liaising with God knows who to get people, delegates to move for an amendment saying that the NHS reinstatement bill is not a Labour bill, they'll pretend it's not a Labour bill, yeah. and they'll say, you know, we should change this, we should change the text to say a Labour reinstatement bill. We must reject that. All delegates must reject any kind of, any move to amend this motion. The, the motion has right. to go through. Us. So okay, can, please can okay. momentum get that out to, you know, to... They, they will, no, I don't think we will. We will. Uh, we've got about 20 minutes. We've got 20 minutes.